We'll be right back after this commercial break. We believe in equality, tolerance, and respect for all. Because Sikh values are American values. We are doctors, PTA moms, patriots. We are Americans. We like Game of Thrones. I'm obsessed with Star Wars. I've seen every episode of SpongeBob because that's what my daughters like to watch. We, we, we are six. Thank you. Thank you. As a young girl, I just grew to love using power tools, pouring concrete, and doing things that were scary and loud, and yet I looked around and realized no other girls are doing these things. As I grew up, I realized that girls need to see themselves in this space. Start here. So that's what I set out to do, and I became an educator and a mentor for young girls. No masks down till clear. Making teaches girls how to think of their ideas as important. Go light. It changes the way they think about what they're capable of. If I can fuse metal, what can't I do? Perfect. Look at how good that was. So good at it. <laughs> and so I think making for girls is about voice, and that's what's really exciting because we're building the world we want to see for ourselves. <laughs> now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. How I define making? In the broadest possible terms, it is making something extant in the world that didn't exist. Everybody who's ever made anything is bringing something into fruition for a reason. And that act in and of itself makes us stewards of our culture. It's something that we're talking about. It's a response. Actually, it's telling a story. That's really what it is. And I include everything that could be made. Painting, sculpture, welding, all of that. Yellow is positive. When a kid gets their hands on the world and learns that they can make their fantasy play, that they can make their reality, that's power. And as far as I'm concerned, everyone should feel that kind of power. There we go. If there's something that interests you to bring into the world, that's fantastic. Go figure out how to do it. Go tell your own story. There it is. And so I want to know why you make. Let's go. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. Unused prescription opioid pain medicines can spell many things. Risk, if they're taken by someone they weren't prescribed for. Harm, if accidentally taken by a child or a pet. And overdose, if they're not used as directed. They may be hiding in your home, in bathrooms, kitchens, or anywhere. Why put your family at risk? Safely dispose of opioids before they can do harm. The best thing is to find a drug take-back option, such as medicine drop-off boxes, mail-back programs, or home disposal products. If there isn't a take-back location near you, check the FDA's flush list. Medicines on the flush list may be especially dangerous if they are used by children, pets, or others in your home. No take-back location nearby and your medicine isn't on the flush list? You can dispose of it in the trash. Get more information on safe opioid disposal and remove the risk. Welcome back to Desert Wood Days, and I am here with the talented Tony Noyes. Welcome, Tony. Hi there. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Just helping you're going to help make some noise here today. That we are, <laughs> yes. I'm going to do my best. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. So, Tony, you are a musician, a performer, a singer, all those things in one. 
Yes. Are you a songwriter also? I am, yes. Okay, so you write, do you write all your music? Uh, yeah, well, I started out writing music and the big dream and, the, you know, <laughs> we all want to make it big and tour the world and right. try to take over the world. And, uh, and you know, so I did that for, for in the beginning of my career and just writing music, putting out albums and going out and playing shows locally. And uh, then I slowly got into, you know, there wasn't a lot of money in the beginning of those mm. things. You know, you sell your CDs, you sell your shirts, make a little bit here and there. Then I was offered a position doing uh, cover songs. Oh, okay. and it was for an 80s tribute. And, uh, and I, I didn't know if I could sing that or not because they wanted the real high screamy stuff, oh, right? Okay. So uh, I went for an audition or a jam, if you'd call it that, and just went in and screamed, my, you know, screamed as much as I could. <laughs> yeah, and they were at the, at the end of it, they were like, oh, yeah, let's do this, you know. So, so um, I want to take you back a little bit. When did you first decide that this was what the industry you wanted to get into? I think it was a Van Halen concert in 81. Oh. That, you know, I mean, I actually loved music. Uh, I listened to some Jimi Hendrix. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I thought that was amazing. So I started getting into some different kinds of music, rock and roll specifically. Then a friend said, hey, you want to go to this Van Halen concert? And here I'm watching Eddie Van Halen play the guitar and do these things behind his is back with his guitar, David Lee Ross swinging from the rafters or some, you know, some ladders that were hanging. And I went, that is what I want to do right, right. there. That is cool. Right. And so, you know, talk with my friends and we'd make up band names and songs called Tight Leather. And, you know, <laughs> that was one of the songs. I forget what they were. We were all sitting in a circle in the front yard, you know, and just making up songs and names of bands and so they're dreaming about it. So, so that was the, the beginning of it, I think, for me. So would your family say <clears throat> that's who you were as a kid? Uh, a musician, you mean? That, yeah, that kid that just performed and had fun. Yeah, and... well, I mean, I was, I'm an artist. I do, I, I sketch drawings, I, I hand draw, I sculpt, I've done oil painting, I do computer graphics, I do 3D animation now, uh, filmmaker, just anything that has to do with art I love. But the performing part, it was definitely, I mean, I used to do little skits, my, my poor younger brother. Uh -huh. I used to drag him into him and say, all right, I'm Evil Knievel, you're the reporter. I just crashed and I'm on the ground. <laughs> And then, so I'm on the ground and going, I'm thinking this is my last jump. And he's going, you know, he's putting the mic right. to me. So we would do that for our parents and just put on little shows. Wow. And yeah, so. The things we did as a kid. Huh? It was crazy, yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of kids do that, like, hey, mom, damn, we're putting on a show. But I mean, I did it constantly. And then I would take my mom's sewing gear and sew Santa Claus hats uh -huh. and Spider-Man masks. And I would go out and jump on the walls and pretend I'm Spider-Man. And, you know, just anything I could make and create. And, that's awesome. It was just, yeah, crazy, crazy kid stuff. You That's know. awesome. So you went to the Van Halen concert and you fell in love that with that genre of music. So is it predominantly rock and roll that you do now? Uh, it, it is what I. It's what I perform. I love all all music. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's good music, it's good music. Sure. I mean, you know, it's good and bad. Sure. You know. Uh, and so I didn't at first, at first it was all just rock and roll, man, yeah, you know. And then you start branching out and looking at notes. And when I started composing music, I started having an appreciation for other kinds of music. Right. Because once you understand the logic of the notes and how they go together and the and different... Once, and too, when you, I don't want to say mature, but you, you, you mature, your mind matures and things change, it, things change in your life. I mean, you may tweak things a little bit. I mean, rock and roll may still be your love. But yeah. sometimes you change due to things going on in your life. Right. So, oh, I think you're right. When you, as you mature too, you're not worried about that being in that click of, hey, you know, I wasn't listening to that country music or whatever. <laughs> you know, you don't worry about what people really think or say right. anymore. Right. Most of us don't. You grow out of that. And uh, do you love? Do you do you enjoy country music? I I I don't like listen to that all the time. I'll listen oh. to a couple songs like. Uh, you know, I listen to everything. So I'll put on some rap or some oh. uh, R&B or some blues and then some right. country. But like recently, I wanted to learn the dance from Garth Brooks. So oh. I picked up the guitar, I started learning it. And then I listened to it. And I'm like, man, that's a beautiful song. You know, the more I listened to it. Right. And uh, and then I did kind of a, yeah, I did kind of a dance song with some cool, it always had like the effects from the, um, uh, God, what was it? The California song. California. It's, it's an older 80s song. But uh, I, I got I get new effects and plugins that I record for oh. sound and for voice voice plugins that change it up and this was one is almost like uh, one of the Beastie Boys songs. Oh, okay. So I wrote a song that sounded kind of Beastie and you know with oh. a rap element. So 
it just depends on what I'm doing or what the flavor is. And um, but but mostly I, when I turn on the radio, it's on a rock station. Oh. I mean, that's kind of my my first love. And, that's your first love. Yeah, and I love, but I love acoustic rock, like really slow, melodic, beautiful acoustic. Um, which I'm in a band right now called Blacklight Acoustic uh, Conspiracy. It's a long oh. name, B A C. Um, but they kind of we kind of take a rock song, a heavy rock song, uh -huh. and make it this beautiful acoustic piece. Well, they do. I just get to sing over the top of it. Um, so I love everything from that all the way up to the real heavy screamy stuff you know if you remember um can you tell me about the first song you wrote oh goodness uh the first song that i i want to say that I, I probably pieced a bunch of stuff together and i always hear things in my head but the first one from beginning to end which i mean i have any, i did record on a three song demo mm. many many moons ago <laughs> but uh it was called love uh, behind closed doors is was the name of it and it kind of was an old '50s type riff, uh -huh. and, but slow, and it was a, it was kind of a love song. It was about loving you behind closed doors type thing. Okay, so, okay. God, you're bringing back some memories. Now. Look at that <laughs> flashbacks. As a um, rock and roll performer, because that's where I'm seeing you're at. Even though you like doing a variety of things, or you love a variety of music, what is it that you love the most about being a rock and roll? performer, singer, songwriter? Uh, the, the rock and roll specifically uh -huh. or just? Yes, at, at being placed in that genre of music and that type of performer, what is it that you enjoy the most? Uh, it's just something that you gravitate towards, mm -hmm. I think. I don't know if there's anything specific that I can, I mean, it's just kind of me. It's, it's uh -huh. something that I listen to and I went, wow, I really like that. And when I sit down with the guitar or I'm writing lyrics, I just gravitate towards that type of thing. Um, it could be the mood that I'm in. I mean, you know, I get in a bad mood. I'm like, I'm going to write this angry rock song. Or it could be a happier. And then I'll put a lighter acoustic feel to it. So, um, And the reason why I ask that is that with the, most rock and roll singers, I mean, they have a look. They have a look. They have, I'm going to say this image. I mean, I mean, they perform real hard. Okay, it's just like acting. They, it's like a performance. Right. So... Is it more of that performing, that hardcore um, dancing and acting and all that, or is it the music? I think I. it's just something when I get on stage and even when I'm doing an acoustic act, I had an acoustic act that was called Deadwood. And uh, and we had, you know, the, the acoustic drums, just loud mm -hmm. drums, and then we had the, the electric bass and two acoustic guitars. And I still, I had really long hair at the time, and I would flip my hair around as I'm playing these, <laughs> these acoustic songs. So I think it's more the energy of mm -hmm. the crowd. And I try to put it out there. I've, I've played in front of two people. Mm. You know, went to, the, went to the place. It was like a bar, and nobody's there. And I'm going in the bathroom and say, hey, we're going to start. Anybody in here? You want, you want to come out and see the show if there's anybody in there? Uh, and there's nobody there. So the, I remember the two people. I said, well, here, scoot your table up. What are you doing way in the back? Come over right. here. And I grabbed the table. Right. I said, we'll perform for you guys. And uh, so I, I'm jumping around like a goofball. I always say like a goofball, but I'm but I just put it out there for to entertain people, right. because I think when when you know when I watch a show and I see somebody put their all into it mm -hmm. and put on a show and and the whole band. I mean, I not not, not just the singer. I like seeing right. the whole like big circus act going on. Right. It just is so entertaining to me. So that's what I try to give, and then I just feel it back. Right. I feel the vibes. I feel the energy. I feel I see the smiles on the people's faces and I go, that's, you know, I try to get, I like to make people laugh right. and, and have a good time. So I think it's not necessarily only just the rock element. It's uh -huh. just the, the performing. Sure. I love that. Yeah. Um, I was speaking with someone once and it's all about the, the one of the greatest feeling is what you're giving off to that audience and, and also what you're receiving from them. Yeah. So that helps you to give a better performance because oh. they're interacting with you. Oh, yeah. It yeah. takes it up so many notches. Yeah. Like, you know, you get started and you're a little rusty. Okay, let's get going. And then you see people jumping up and down or putting their hands in the air and uh -huh. smiling big. And you go, all right, this is, you know. And then it just takes you up. You start, you know, I think if you're making somebody laugh, like a comedian doing that, they start being goofier. Right. Trying to keep sure. the thing going. So yes. I think that's what's happening, you know, yes. really. So do you, um, um, do you guys, Corey, Choreograph, um, 
your stage or your movements or things like that, or does is it just natural? It's a natural. It's thing. just natural. I, you know, and I always, I always argued with different musicians because some said, you know, they, we just go up there and do our thing, and then you have others that kind of complain that ah, I don't like the picture or the way I'm standing, and I go, well, if you don't like it, then change it. You know, look in the mirror and right. kind of do, you know. Right. You figure out what you want to do or what you want to look like. I think that's a part of putting on a show. It's well, a yeah, it's going to be, especially if you're holding the instrument also. So right. it's going to be a little odd or different. It's whatever your body's doing in that during that performance. Yeah, and I think yeah. it's different for everybody. And and for myself, I you know, I've been in tribute bands, too. I was in mm. nine bands at one time. I think it was nine or so. And I was playing Paul Stanley of Kiss. Oh. And then I was playing Vince Neil of Motley Crue. And I did... Guns and Roses, and so each one has their element, but I always tend to, there's, there's, it's a 50-50, it's half me, because uh, <laughs> my performance just comes out of what I do, right. and uh, and then the other part is trying to be the character at the same time, right, right? so, you know, at that at that point, you know, we have to kind of figure out or choreograph what we're doing mm -hmm. as, as trying to look like the band, but sure. when I get out there, I do it, and sometimes, you know, I, we've had moments where let's all go up to the front at this part and mm -hmm. put our guitars out and do this, so... You do a little bit, and this depends on, you know, the band I was with or the people I was with. Because some of them went, nah, we're not doing that. We don't want to do right, that. Right, right. So, so, Tony, you spoke about some of the cover bands that you and your um, your band perform. When you're doing a cover band, are you uh, strict with the authenticity of that band's music? Uh, the, the music, I think, yes, but it, it's kind of... Um, you know, you play it like the album. That's mm -hmm. what I tell most of the guys. Just learn it like the album. Let's just play it from beginning to end. Unless you're adding some drum solo in there and lace it in through the set. But yeah, I mean, I try to be, um, you know, I, I don't think you get in there and, and just start yelling at people. We need to have this, you know, pounding your fist. We need to have it perfect. But because it's about having fun right. at the same time. But, uh, you know, I do try to find members that want to try to be authentic. Mm. And the guys that are going, I have this and this, this little... You know, this little stud right here is in the right place com compared to the picture. You know, they're really, that's, that's what I do. They're really into I'm like, it. Yeah, I'm like, these three are exactly where they're supposed to be, which is weird. But you know what? It looks great. I mean, I, my costume was like, you know, pretty right on. So I try to find members that are like that because if you're not all on the same page to do that, it, then you have that friction in a band, which I've learned many times from doing it the wrong so way. So you're, <laughs> you're, you're a songwriter, so you write your original music. Yes. Why does one do a cover band if they're a songwriter and do their own original music? Uh, for me, it was it was money. Oh, okay. it was it was money, and, and I got a chance to get up and play some songs that I really like. You know, oh. some that I grew up with, I jammed to them. The '80s it was an '80s tribute that I did, oh, okay. and we did everything from like all the rock bands that I grew up with. Oh, okay. And I'm like, that sounds like fun. Let's do that. And then you get to put on a costume and become this. You know, become this other this alter person that you may have admired or someone. And that just is, create a character. Right. I mean, I'm an actor as well, so that's. It was like that's what that is. I get to act like Paul Stanley, or I get to act like Vince Neil, or I get to act like this eight this '80s character was a part, a piece of me. Right. You know, my craziness and nuttiness up there, but then I'm wearing eyeliner and and have the long hair. Right. You know, and puckering the lips and shaking my butt, <laughs> and became and everybody like thought you know it's kind of like I, I always related to Pee Wee Herman like everybody thought that's who the guy was when you mm -hmm. talk to him <laughs> right, you know they thought right, that was the guy but right. that's not really you know the actor sure. everybody expected that out of him so it, I started getting messages like you know I love your fishnet and your leather you want to go out to dinner and ride on my motorcycle okay now <laughs> yeah I know they wanted to pay me and everything and I'm like. How much are you going to pay? <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to do it. But no, yeah, they thought I was into S&M and all. But really, it was just that's that was what they were wearing. Right. They were wearing leather and spikes. Right. And well, Tony, uh, just go back and take a look. Well, I know yeah. you brought us some media today, so we're going to take a look at one of your videos. Okay, great. Okay. It's me, take a ride, hold show. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think something I don't want to get caught up in. Come on, kid, it's like nothing you've ever felt before. No, I don't want nothing to do with you or your ride. Hey, hey, come on.
Oh my God, I loved it. <laughs> the little girl in the teal top. She was just too cute. <laughs> oh, I love it. That makes me smile. All the people in the back. Yeah, she's just flinging her. Yeah, she has so around. much energy. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That was the best part about making that whole video. Was just I, I every time I had to watch it over and over and just watch one person what they were doing. Yes. Each I, time I went through, I just love the whole cast that's that in there. That was awesome. Yeah. So where did that thought come from? Where did uh, well, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. A lot of my stuff is like, uh, it's just an idea that just comes from wherever. It's, mm -hmm. And you've heard a lot of musicians or artists yeah. probably say that. They're like, I just got this thing that came in, and I sit down and play it. You don't know where it comes from. Yeah. It just comes from somewhere. And uh, that was one of those that was kind of like that. I, I don't know. It was one of those, The House of Mirrors came up. Um, it's a song about drugs. And, oh. you know, I don't want to play in The House of Mirrors again. There's my son's going through the house of mirrors with a bunch of white dust and there's a lot of white powder if you notice so that's kind of what uh the song's about so um you know i figure it's it's a fun house i happened to be going down the road and it was uh there was a carnival setting up and there was a house of mirrors and i was writing the song oh, okay. so i some of that footage is from me going up there just with my phone and getting some footage of the house of mirrors oh, okay. and uh so that's where the idea of the whole carnival uh mm -hmm. big top thing came from so so you, have, you have children? I do, yes. Okay, were they in the performance? My son was in there, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was the, the kid going into the ride, speaking with Tim, oh, okay. was also in there. So those that was him, and then he was also in the clown suit playing the guitar oh, okay. for me, doing flips. So how does your um, son feel about Dad being a rock? I think he likes it. He? He's he's following in the footsteps, which... Oh, he probably, I, his friends, he probably think Dad's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm lucky. I mean, most kids don't, right? right. Like, I don't want to be like dad, but yeah, he, yeah, he, he actually loves what I do. He came to me with some of my old music that I did uh, in the 2000, you know, the turn of Wonderful. the century. And I put out a, a, and I had a band and I put out a couple discs, CDs, and he started listening to the music. He goes, I want to remake this because he started doing his own music and I produce oh, his goodness. music. I go, you just trying to be nice. He's trying to be nice and make me feel good that you want to do one of my songs. And he's done five of them now. How old is he? And he's 18. He just turned oh, okay. 18. Yeah. Uh, we started producing music about a year and a half ago and he's 16. Mm. And he started singing and screaming. He likes a lot of the, ah, you he know. He likes the screaming. He does. He likes the scream. That's stuff. a good way of relieving stress. Oh, it is. He's in the shower every day. <laughs> and he comes out with a big smile. It's all gone. That's why you guys always seem so happy. <laughs> I know, right? We get it all out of our system. Get it out. Yeah. Just, we, just scream once a day and get it out. We can't cork it up. No, we just scream once a day. Sometimes it's more than once a day, but hey, that's life. But yeah, it's, it's yeah. He, so what advice would you give to someone, um, an aspiring musician that wants to become a rock and roll performer? Uh, well, it's a crazy business. Don't do it. No, I'm just kidding. It's, uh, I, you know, I always say that like for anything, just do it. I told my son that, I, you know, I had no idea he was going to do that. I was just, I said, whatever you want to do and whatever he likes. Mm -hmm. Can I have a guitar? Yeah. So I bought him a guitar and, uh, I said, but whatever you decide to do, if you become a, a football player or uh -huh. a, whatever you decide and behind whatever uh -huh. so if somebody wants to do that they just just start doing it there's really no there's really no method or way about doing it if you're looking to go for the big time mm -hmm. you know california hollywood uh, nashville new york are the places to go that's where uh -huh. the business is i tell a lot of uh, younger musicians that are artists so um if i see you didn't list arizona so what is the Arizona scene like for you? Well, I think Arizona scene is, is uh, I mean, we have a lot going on here and it's a great, it, it's just not, I don't, I don't think it's national or international. You know, oh. Alice Cooper, I watched all the biographies oh. on all the musicians and all the actors. All of them went go to Hollywood. You know, oh. that's the place where you got to go. I'm going to get out of this town. And oh. Alice Cooper was one that said, you know, <laughs> we were even smart enough to know we weren't going to get anywhere in Arizona because mm. it's it's basically there's a lot going on in every state. It's the right. same, but there's not people here looking to take you to Hollywood here. They don't mm. go to go to where you are mm. unless there's something really big happening with you. Right. There has to be a huge explosion. So do you go, see that, that changing? <clears throat> Excuse me. Changing here? Yes. Have uh, you seen much change with that? <clears throat> Excuse me. They, uh. Well, they started talking about doing movie studios and started yeah. talking about, and, and don't get me wrong, it's a great local 
community. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's going to change like that. I see more people from California coming here, and I've met right. a few recently who are in the business, right. and they like it. It's a little bit slower here. We're, it's not as uh -huh. crazy as, you know, in fast right. pace. Right, they, they would come here to retire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that's basically it, and that's what a lot of people, a lot of them come here. I go, they don't come here for the music business. Uh -huh. but, so I don't know if it'll change. I mean, uh -huh. it has. It might. you never know. With things that are going on, if, if the scene's not happening, more people are moving here, they might start more studios here. And, right. But There's always hope, and I think um, with people like you that's out there working in the community and helping to bring about change, it could happen. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's uh, I anymore. I just kind of do it just because I love doing it. Right. And that's awesome. If something big happens, it does. It doesn't. I just do it because it's me. You know. Any new projects coming up? Uh, like I said, I'm jamming with an acoustic band called Blacklight Acoustic Conspiracy. And some very talented musicians, like off the charts talent, uh, that I that I just I'm blown away every time I sit in the room with them. I sit in the room, listen to them, watch them putting stuff together. I'm like, I feel very fortunate and lucky to be in the room and singing with them, singing. You know, they, they all sing sure. and everything. So we'll be hitting the scene soon with that. There's some recordings online. Go to YouTube. There's some links to listen oh. to some of the recordings we've done. So where can our audience find you? Uh, at www.tonynoise.com, just my name. That's the best place to go. I'm on social media sites as well. And uh, this is the, the album. You can find it there. You can buy it there as well. There you go. I'm showing off. There you go. There no. you go. Treat yourself. There you this go. is Noise versus Good Evil. He's throwing at our, our crew here. You That's see that? You. <laughs> <laughs> throwing at the camera for a 3D shot. Let's do it. Well, it was such a pleasure to have you here today, Tony. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here today at Desert Wood Days, and we will catch you next time.